Oh, hi, you guys. Hola, everybody. Look at how my Spanish is going. Hablo oh. español. <laughs> That's very a uh, physical reaction to a Mexican vacation. Well played, sir. Thank it's hard you. To, it's hard to manage that thought process seeing that he's in fleece because I feel like I should. Hug <laughs> That's the Canadian in him. <laughs> yeah, it looks like he's going to go snuggle in some sort of log cabin up a mountain. Oh man, how was it? I'm a man of opposites, Kelly. I just <laughs> love the warmth of the Mexican winter and our own Canadian winter with. Mm, all the layers on top of yourself. Oh. Uh, I had a great time. Thanks for asking. I'm really happy to be back. I've missed the last three shows. So it feels like it's been forever, but let's talk 90s. Let's get into it. Uh, let's get into it. Uh, I was trying to, I was going to say something uh, in Spanish, but I think it's. Vamos en. Bienvenido. <laughs> en los Welcome. nueventes años. Uh, sí. Yeah. Sí. Una cerveza, por favor. I did use that sentence yeah. <laughs> a lot. It's good to have one <laughs> in the pocket. That way you at least know you get a cold drink on a hot day. Yes. All right. So for today, and you're welcome back, uh, we'll tackle a couple of things, uh, not the least of which is, uh, oh, my notes are at the bottom of my page here, so I was going to spoil the surprise about um a 90s Rewind, which we will get to. But uh, we're going to talk about how uh, Jonathan Knight has uh, shared some of the uh, pressures that he was given early on in uh, when he was a new kid. So we'll talk about that because it's actually pretty troubling. But I mean, happy ending. That's a heads up on this one. Um, also, as uh, one of the uh, enduring bands of our time is headed to Vegas, baby. Uh, uh, most of them anyways. We'll talk about that. Also, uh, tell you how those lads from Dublin will walk on. Uh, oh. I know I did it. I did that. Yeah, you did. Uh, <laughs> Kelly's got some <laughs> trivia to challenge us in a '90s rewind that will take us right back to uh, well, the beginning of our favorite decade. Um, where shall we start, though? Should we start with Jonathan Knight, or should we start with you two? Ooh, I spoiled the surprise. <laughs> Maybe we should start with you two since I spoiled the surprise. Let's do it. Because you two are heading to Vegas, and that's a big deal. Mm -hmm. uh, setting up uh, what'll be a visually uh, really compelling experience, uh, as well as um, there'll be one man down, which has never happened for this band. But Larry Mullen Jr. has to have some surgery and uh, won't be performing with you two, at least for the beginning of. Uh... Sorry, that's my dog. <laughs> <laughs> I thought Santa Claus was coming back. <laughs> if he's digging, it's going to take him this long. So, <laughs> um, so yeah, so Larry Mullen Jr. won't be joining the band, at least at the beginning. He's got to uh, recuperate from necessary surgery. Um, and so they've got a guy named Bram Vandenberg. Do you know him being the rock queen, Sharon? Uh, I don't know him actually. And what I was looking at was some of his, um, uh, credits and none sound familiar to me, <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, he's got the faith of the band, which I think is all you really need. Uh, and if you've got the band behind you, then fans will undoubtedly, uh, follow suit. But as far as the list of credits, uh, the article that I read said that uh, he's drummed for such acts as Van Velzen, Drive Like Maria, and Guild of Stags. Nope. Guild of Stags? Yep. Okay. Uh, that was before Krezip reunited just about four years ago. So Never and heard of any of those. Me neither. And, and not for lack of them trying, because they have six albums that last band Kresip has six albums they, wow. they're just about to release their sixth actually in april so i guess we've got some work to do but uh as far as his experience and influence goes this guy bram points to uh of course larry mullen jr as an influence but uh, roger taylor from queen taylor hawkins late great and uh, of course dave grohl as big influences on his drumming so no doubt he'll be able to uh you know I think capture the uh, the energy of you two who are you know more than four decades into what they've been doing, and again this is a this is a pretty big first for that band to not have their um, original and unchanged lineup 
in Vegas, but they're doing it. We had a discussion months ago about would this or would this not happen with them going forward without mm-hmm. Harry. So yeah, it's pretty wild. Um, I'm kind of, I'm surprised by it. And I think if I were going to see you too, I would want them as I know them. Yeah. They've, my, they've yeah. never had any other changes, you know? My question is like two or three years down the line or whenever, when like the truth comes out, will Larry Mullins be like, they gave me no choice. I had to say that this was a good idea. <laughs> well, uh, you know what? He is the originator of that band. So I'm not sure that he, he, he I'm pretty sure it's uh, an equal democracy on, on making decisions like that. So I don't think he's like the last on the list for consideration. I think he's probably first. And he strikes me as a kind of guy that makes sensible choices in his life. Yeah. Uh, and s- clearly he needs the surgery. So that's obviously the sensible choice, but yeah. um, you know, having them move forward, I think is uh, that's an interesting choice. Mm-hmm. I don't know how I feel about it. <laughs> my None face might, indica- my face might indicate that I'm not, I'm not satisfied, but <laughs> I'm trying. Maybe you should go in a drum. Maybe. Oh, Ooh, boom, ta, boom, boom, ta. <laughs> yeah. Sharon's well, I'm beat. ready. I've been, to, I've been to Vegas before, so I'm down with it. Nice. I nice. think I can handle it. And of course, the whole what happens in Vegas stays in Vegas. I'd never be able to talk about it, so <laughs> that would be fine. <laughs> Silly. Um, so yeah, so that's good news. You know what, at least they're, I think if I <laughs> Sharon searched for a silver lining or, a, you know, make it a positive story, they're doing it. So they're doing their best to make sure that fans get the experience that they had planned. And I'm assuming that everything will go well for Larry Mellon Jr. with his recu- uh, recuperation and recovery, that he'll uh, he'll just jump right in when when it's time. I have, I, I'm sure it'll be all, be fine. Like, I, they're such a savvy band. They wouldn't go into this if they thought that they couldn't pull this off or, you know. True. Mm-hmm. Although mm-hmm. I really don't think that they could go ahead if Bono had vocal issues and needed to Oh, break. no so. chance. <laughs> the edge too. Like I don't think they could also do that. Agreed. Yeah. There's One. just sometimes there's key members of the band that if they ain't there, it's an an issue. Well, yeah, and it not to diminish Larry Mullen's work certainly, but you can get a drummer. Yeah. And you can get other you know instrumentalists to at least play the way that the originals play. So at least in that case, uh, this guy Bram will have. Uh, have pretty big shoes to fill, pretty big sticks to fill. Mm-hmm. Exactly. And it sounds like he's up for it. So, you know, what's interesting is remember, it might even be 10 years ago at this point. Remember when In Excess were searching for their yes. singer? And JD Fortune, I thought, did a great job. He even sounded like Michael, Michael Hutchins for me. Agreed. I, I thought he had like, like chutzpah and like the whole thing. Like I thought he was good. So I don't know what fell apart. I don't know why. It I fell think apart. he got uh, pretty into being a rock star. Oh, I see. Okay. And that then and again, not knowing anything aside from what I read and and watched the, you know, the dwizzle happen or the dwindle happen, it mm-hmm. seems that he was pretty into the the status versus the performance. And I think what very good singer, and he, I think they it was the right choice for the for that band to be able to move forward. Mm-hmm. Uh, but uh, I don't think that there was ever any replacing the great. Michael Hutchins with his swagger and his confidence. And he just had that je ne sais quoi thing that, uh, that, you know, it's almost magic. Mm-hmm. And you get into that where you think you're good enough. And clearly the band thought he was good enough. Mm-hmm. Maybe he got a bit uh, high on that power. Cause remember they were going to, um, there was rumors they were going to bring on Terrence Trent Darby for a while. Oh yeah. Mm-hmm. That would have been cool. I think they could have had a revolving door of different, uh, mm-hmm. Uh, uh, singers with them that would have been neat because yeah. gosh Terrence Trent Darby he was that would have been a cool return I think for them yeah. and for him why don't they hire us to make the big decisions Sharon? I know. <laughs> it's not like we're not ready we are ready to make decisions <laughs> if nothing else we'll make the decisions yeah I feel like uh, this hat makes me very decision oriented and art- artistic yeah. yes artistic is the word I look like I'm about <laughs> to paint but I can't, so don't worry. <laughs> um, who was it? Terry Bradshaw at Super Bowl a couple of weeks back had a similar chapeau on. It's true. It's true. Yeah. He also nice. had suspenders on. Yeah, I don't have those. No. Nope. No, and that's good because you're not a seventy-five year five year old portly fellow. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not saying there's anything wrong with that. I'm just saying you're not that. No, not not yet, anyway. Uh, Adam, I'm sure that you have missed 
doing Kelly's trivia, so we should probably jump right into that. I have, so let's <laughs> dive right into it. <laughs> 90s. <laughs> now. Trivia. Bing bong. Yeah. So, uh, Adam, big news. Sharon got both trivia questions last week when you Ooh. were here. Okay. <laughs> All right. The bar is set very high. Yeah. Let me drop it for you just a little bit today. And there uh, were only actually, there wasn't even see. pictures. It was actual questions. She didn't wow. use like, images. Yeah, I know. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, actually, let, before we start, um, I'll ask you one of the questions I asked Sharon because to see if you got it. So this is a question from last week that Sharon okay. got. Inline skates are more commonly known by what name? Inline skates? Yep. Rollerblades? Yes, sir. Woo! So we would have been quite a battle last week had you been I'm here. so good. Yep, yep. <laughs> uh, so this is a tough one. We're starting off with news and politics. Uh-oh. Uh, which South African president oversaw the release of Nelson Mandela and the end Sharon. of- Sharon. Go, Sharon. De Klerk? Yay! Good for you. I, I thought we were still in last week's uh, answers. You <laughs> <laughs> uh, had your smug look on. That was great. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you <laughs> knew that one. That's my, I know a thing or two. Nice. I like it. Very good. Adam, did you have a clue? Uh, no, I would have not guessed that. Got when it. you said South Africa, I almost said Adam, Nelson Mandela. <laughs> but then that, that would have not made it. So no, no. Uh, question number two, much more lighthearted, if you will. Um, okay. Wait, which is the one I wanted to ask? Um, it's this one. What did Melody Pops double up as? What did Melody Pops double up as? What do you mean double up as? Um, so they were one thing, but they could also be another thing. So the one thing I think that they were is a candy. Oh, I thought Melody Pops was a was someone. Me too, like a band of Powerpuff Girls or something. <laughs> no, it was Melody something Pops. which I believe was a candy, and then it could also be a something else. Um, were they earbuds? Oh, that's <laughs> nice. Good guess. Nope. <laughs> okay, it's not nice at all. <laughs> if they were a candy and then earbuds, that's gross. That is also gross. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, mm. but you know, I figured Melody Pops, you know, little pops of like. Mm. <laughs> what's that in my ear mm, for anybody delicious. who's supposed to be now please do your best just to watch the visual <laughs> podcast this week to watch Sharon's <laughs> that mm. scene I'll keep it. So was delicious. it the same thing that are two things or are they two different things that have the same name uh <laughs> it's like a candy okay something else that it can be because of being a candy oh Sharon oh Sharon gum close a whistle oh i think i remember that yeah because i think i guess you like i guess it's like a lollipop and then when you're left with like the plastic <laughs> bit probably is <laughs> again please watch this week's episode <laughs> now if you're listening <laughs> i'm trying to act it out for myself mm, that's delicious <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that's the commercial they didn't air yeah, that was left on the marketing room floor, Sharon. <laughs> yeah, back to you. You're welcome. So uh, not exactly lighthearted in this transition, but we were going to uh -oh. talk about Jonathan Knight and how he has shared some of his experiences about how basically he was pressured into not coming out back when uh, new kids were just on the rise. Um, and I'm not condoning that. I'm just saying, I, I think that it, it, it's not surprising that it happened, certainly for, you know, the time mm -hmm. uh, and in a bigger picture on a marketing scale, you don't want anything to mess up the plan. And not to say that, you know, your personal life would mess up something. And, you know, we're this many years later, you know, over 30 years later that uh, that you are you and you are encouraged to be you. Um, but back then, no don't be you. We need you to be what we have told the people you are. And so their manager basically told him, you will mess this up for everybody and the record company is going to lose money. So don't come out. Mm -hmm. Which is awful. Awful. And By I, I'm assuming that um, Lance uh, Bass went through something similar, I think. for I would, Yeah, I would say so. 
And yeah. that's probably why that conversation that they had on his podcast, Lance uh, Bass's podcast called Frosted Tips, which I love. I follow <laughs> them on Instagram. It's worth the the follow. <laughs> yeah. uh, so he totally would be able to identify. He would have been like a, a baton taker, I guess, from yeah. Yeah. You know, NSYNC coming after uh, new yeah. kids. But uh, also so Jonathan Knight talked it, about. In 2023 terms, like looking back on those, oh, yeah. you know, 88, 89, whatever. It's so silly because you're like, of course he should have been him. But like, yeah, in that moment. Yeah. You know, it's there's crazy. no way. And even like me looking back, like there's no way I could have come out in high school, you know, uh, no. at the time that it was. And and I like, yeah, because I remember now there was a girl that was openly gay, like a few years older than me. And mm -hmm. it did not go well for her in my high school. Yeah. So I'm very grateful it, it did not happen at that juncture in the times that we were in. So, yeah. And it's it's confusing enough, you know, as a as a realization whatever you are whatever your uh whatever your direction is mm -hmm. whoever you are it's hard enough to be a mm -hmm. teenager a 20 something even into your 30s even some people have a hard time being in their 40s and, and upward it's hard mm -hmm. enough mm -hmm. uh but then to have you know you're, you're just about to take off and some someone older than you is saying no 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 this is, you know, I'm putting that kind of pressure on a poor kid who I remember then would uh, be pretty vocal about his anxieties about performing. And I wonder not to diminish anxieties, but I wonder if it was less about performance anxiety and more about being stifled as uh, as the person he he it was, might have been truly out in, in that way. You know what I mean? Like oftentimes yeah. the what you're doing or, or, or going through is not the root problem. Right. Mm -hmm. So it could have been. It, it could have exactly been that. And he might not have known, like, why am I having this? But it was because he wasn't being true to himself and all that sort of stuff. So I I can't imagine what he went through, I'm, the pressure on him, because I think even Lance has talked about the pressure on him years later mm -hmm. to, to keep it together, knowing that, like, Screaming Girls needed to keep believing and being Screaming Girls, you know, for yeah. all the band members. So. And it's, it's interesting, too. Like, I remember even with uh, George Michael and Wham!, back in you know the mid 80s or early 80s even when they first came out as a band mm -hmm. um they weren't he george michael wasn't out at that time and it took a long time for him to come out but i remember even thinking there's no way he's not gay right you know he's so pretty and perfect and like still you know masculine whatever he was it was like the perfect package, but I thought he's gay, but there was so many people <laughs> around me that I, that were like, I love him. And not that there's anything wrong with loving a person. Yeah. And I'm like, you don't stand a chance, you know? <laughs> <laughs> but, but at that time, he, I don't know that he was even necessarily certain about, uh, about, you know, what he was to be as a, a fully evolved human. Yeah. Well, he didn't come out until 98 until he was forced to right with the park thing. Yeah. Exactly. So and then he owned it, which. Yeah. And he, um, just, he, when 96, when he came out with Jesus to a child and like fast love, that is one of his like sexiest album covers. He's just beautiful. Yeah. Which is why it's hard knowing that he had a hard time being okay with his image. Cause, yeah. but isn't that sad? Cause like he, he's beautiful, like beautiful and mm -hmm. gorgeous and just like the best voice ever. And then knowing that he didn't think he was good looking at all. It's shocking. I think that's the dangers of, or some of the dangers of, uh, you know, bottling things up or packaging, packaging things away and not dealing with them. The effects of that are almost immeasurable because it's not just that one thing. It's, it's how that thing will, creep into other things and oftentimes without you even knowing it so yeah well i wonder if that also played into george michael's uh drug use right so probably yeah yeah and i mean well, that... in a way it's not and I, like it's not that you would have wanted him to realize that he was super gorgeous because then he might have had the, that like a head the size of alaska but mm -hmm. uh, but i i just feel bad knowing that he never thought he would like i feel like he never thought he was good enough like good looking enough and it couldn't be further from the truth because like as a gay girl I'm hot for George Michael. <laughs> <laughs> Settle down, sister. Settle down, lady. <laughs> yeah. Uh, what I did like about Jonathan Knight was talking about how when he left New Kids in 94 and being the first one to sort of 
say Sia, talked about how the, the attendance at the band's shows had kind of dwindled. But what he said was that there were a few reasons why he left. Number one, being a young gay kid, I was frustrated and wanted to get on with my own life. The other, other reason was that it just felt like it was not going anywhere and I just wanted to be home. All right. So, yeah, but they had like, but it's so funny, like how all the boy bands go like, oh, the successful ones, for the most part, go super high and then have a sh very short shelf life. Yeah. And then luckily from people like Donnie Wahlberg, who like made new kids come back and made yep. it cool again and like Backstreet Boys, because they also went through the same thing where like there was a few years there. They probably, you know, couldn't perform in a telephone booth. You know what I mean? So what I think happens is that as and I think it is probably true for uh, for those bands is that they realize this is our chance to to capitalize on ourselves versus uh, a management team or a record company taking all that they want out of us and more mm -hmm. and wrecking us along the way. This is our chance. Like they make their money off of touring and and all the elements of touring. So, yeah, get out there do it you know like and fans will be there for you and and they have clearly demonstrated that that's exactly what uh what was the right thing to do not just for them but it, it makes complete sense yeah. and of course there is that formula for pop bands pop artists they want you to be popular now yeah they mm -hmm. don't necessarily have a you know 10-year plan or a lifelong plan for how it's going to be for you they i think have a plan for how it's going to be for now and yep best overall for them so yeah. like the business side of it for not the artist first is what i'm trying to say so it's good that they can at least come to terms with that and realize hey man we should totally get out there and do this again mm -hmm. for us yeah i'm in i'm in uh anyways jonathan knight married looks pretty happy yeah happy ending his husband is super Yay. cute harley i think is his first name and he just looks mm. super cute and super supportive and that's amazing they look like happy people, and that's what you wish for people. Uh, we can wrap it up with a 90s rewind. How about that? Do it, lady. Yeah. Lady. We're going back to 1998. Speaking right. of uh, speaking of um, assembled bands that we love so much, our Spice Girls laid it all out for us with too much. <laughs> and yet it was just the right amount. Yeah. They did. <laughs> <laughs> Boys to Men, another uh assembled band were harmonizing in their you know most perfect way that they could on a song for mama oh, oh mama was so lucky yeah. <laughs> mama uh, was. in a contrast though at the same time ll cool j was uh on the charts and was being pretty honest about how all he ever wanted was a father like straight up honest man mm -hmm. uh leanne rhymes was in a bit of a situation and she was asking her way around it with how do i live how do I, how do I, how do I live? Um, and speaking of putting it all out there, Usher laid it all out with, you make me wanna, like, like in an honest way. And it's nice to be honest. I'm down with that. But like clearly fooling around. And the compliment was that she made him want to leave the one he's with and start a new <laughs> relationship. What the hell? That's brazen, man. That song was released in 98. Yeah. Wow. I mm -hmm. thought that was, was it 98? I thought, God, I thought it was even earlier than that. It was earlier than that. It was still charting in 98. Because okay. remember, we're at the beginning of the year. Yeah, yeah. Was it 96 wow. or was it 97? 97, I guess. Uh, the album might have been late 96. Because remember we talked about last show how the release of singles, mm -hmm. it doesn't make much sense because you actually go and buy the album and you have all the singles on the album. You can listen to whenever you want. So however they stagger the release yeah. for radio and they still do it they still do it with like yeah. streams they, and stuff like they, this um, bizarre they, they give up on the albums much earlier nowadays like because yeah. i remember because janet for rhythm nation charted in, in in three calendar years so 89 90 91 Amazing. will never do which was her last single i believe off the album came out in like early 91 so which kind of makes sense when you think about it because back then we didn't have the internet Yep. <laughs> so to encourage people to buy the album, you sprinkle your releases like that because they're seeing the video, they're listening to the songs on the radio. Makes sense. Now, oh, the new single's coming out next week. I'm just going to go and look for it online and it's going to be there. Yeah. It's, it's, it's wild bad. to me that they still kind of apply those old school uh, yep. equations, but they do. 
Again, Kelly, Adam, they're not asking us. We should no, make decisions. <laughs> I think if you could just grant us decision making powers, we'd be you know fixing a lot. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> But that is it for this Thank edition you. of uh, 90s Now. So great to see you. Thank you for not showing off your tan super too much, Adam. But I tried, you know. <laughs> meaning maybe thank you for wearing I'll a... Be, uh, maybe next show I'll take the jacket off. And I was just going to say, meaning thank you for not, you know, coming to the show in a tank top. <laughs> <laughs> Don't uh... give me ideas, Sharon. <laughs> Do not give me ideas. Fair enough. Now, uh, we will... Uh, get together for another show and until that time thank you everybody for finding us wherever you do we appreciate that very much and staying in touch too uh, we like opening up the mailbag so if you're inclined to do it let us know where you are i'm uh, still working on my uh, kath and kim uh, so i can <laughs> try to impress uh um rachel yep. and anybody else with an accent this i don't know what i'm doing <laughs> <laughs> but I'm trying. <laughs> so thank you for listening to 90s Now. Still happening.